Hey everyone, Josh here. So today we're out in the Touareg and we've got a little bit of an issue. Doesn't want to start. Let me turn the fan off so you can hear what it's doing. So I'm holding the key over. So there we go. So we got new batteries in it, so I don't think it's a battery. So we're gonna get this in the shop and see what's going on. Okay, so I've got it warming up in here right now. Uh, so if you're familiar with the channel, my very first video I did was with this Torig. Um, I bought it, it wouldn't crank, wouldn't start. I'd put new batteries in, still didn't work. And it ended up being a bad connection on the starter solenoid itself which is really isn't fun because it's down on this passenger side, down in behind the engine mount. So it's got a bit of a history of it not wanting to start. So what I ended up doing was taking the engine mount off in frame and cleaning the contact up and it started. And then that's when I figured out it needed cams and that's where it's all started. But anyways, it, after getting it together, it's always started okay, but minus 15 degrees Celsius and below not a chance it does what it did out in the driveway there where you got to bump the key 10 times and it doesn't start um, even boosting it from the boost point here it still won't fire so i'm thinking i've either got a starter issue or that cable itself is bad which i have had issues with the alternator cable that's in there melting and having high resistance so anyway so it hasn't been too big of an issue with it not starting it's been a really mild winter so far. Um, the last couple winters I had a work van, I wasn't really too concerned. If it didn't start, I just take the car. Um, but the issue is I'm using this for work full time now and I've got a northern trip I have to go on in a couple weeks here. And right now it's, I think it's minus 32. <laughs> so that's the daytime high. So I don't wanna know how cold's getting to at night. So I need this thing to make sure it actually starts. So we're going to do a voltage drop test, which I will go over how to do that on the bench here. And then um, I'm hoping it's the cable so I can get it out. If not, we have to try and get the starter out. So uh, we'll go over how to do that next and then uh, we'll actually do it on this thing. Okay, so I got my little setup here. So we've got our battery, which it's going to be a battery. We're going to pretend these are our starter cables and that this would be your starting starter, starter motor. Um, so the multimeter, it measures voltages between these two points. So this would be 12 volts. If I checked power and ground here, it should be 12 volts if all of the wiring is good. Um, but the issue is you get some drops across the wire and you also have bad connections, which what I'm hoping is the issue with the Toreg. So what you can do is put one lead on the positive post and then your other lead would be on the positive connection of your starter so what it's doing is it's measuring the voltage difference so um, bad resistance will cause heat which will have a voltage drop so you might lose half a volt there these cables might not be thick enough so you might be losing half a volt there and then the connection here might be bad so you lose half a volt there so all each connection, if you lose voltage on your 12 volt battery, you're now only getting 10 and a half to your starter. And that's why it might start okay when it's warm, but when it gets cold out, it's got to turn harder and the battery's not as strong and when it's cold, that's when you run into starting issues. So you can check voltage drops on both of the positives or positive and negative connections to your starter. So I'll just do a quick demonstration with the uh, other phone here, the battery is 12.3 so if i put power to the fan i can check between the positive post and the positive connection on the fan and that should be as close to zero as possible
So that was 1.7 volts, if you couldn't see that on there. So we had voltage drop. So whether these cables are too thin or I've got bad connection here, as you can see, or right there, as you can see, um, both of those, so you're losing a volt and a half. So if your battery's 12 volts, your starter or your fan in this case will only be seeing 10.3. So that'll be why you have a slow crank. And it gets worse if you've got bad, like a bunch of bad connections. So we're gonna go to the Toreg here and see what we can do. Okay, so the plan here is I'm going to try and get to the starter and I'm gonna put one of my alligator leads on the turn post of the starter. And then I'm gonna fish this over into the cabin and I'm going to use my multimeter on the positive post for the one lead and then the other one will connect to the other side of the alligator clamp. And that should give me a complete circuit voltage drop because I'll have the connection on the starter. I'll have this connection at the jump post here. And I believe that goes right to your um, battery underneath the seat. So I should have three connections. Um, in a perfect world, you should have 0.1 volt per 0.1 volt drop per connection. Um, if it's higher than that, then you've got a bad connection, kind of like what I was showing here. So hopefully this works out. I'm going to use an oscilloscope because I can actually map it and, and actually see, like record it so I can see the voltage drop while cranking. Um, if you have a multimeter, you're going to need an extended crank time to kind of get the multimeter. So you're going to see some spikes and you want it to level out. So you're probably the easiest way to get it to crank without starting will be unplugging the uh, um, injectors at the back of the head here. You might be able to unplug other stuff too or, and get it to do the same thing, but I figure that's probably the easiest thing. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm hoping the oscilloscope can pick it up quick enough. Okay, so it is not a fun spot to get at. Um, I took my ground cable off. Um, so you're gonna have to really look at the picture that I'm gonna post here really close because I can't film this. There's not a chance um, So that's your engine mount there and that is your turbo Intake pipe up there. So it is behind the engine mount below the turbo intake uh, There's gonna be a little Kind of blanket over top of the solenoid. So if you kind of peel that back you can feel a stud about that long with the cable on it so i just got this clamped on there now so i gotta put my ground clamp back on and then uh i think we're actually ready to do this okay so you're gonna have to not mind all the dirt in here um so we got this to our probe positive probe on the pocket pro and then that is on the clamp on the positive on the battery so i have to use my phone for the app to see what it is but I'll film my phone here after okay so I don't have a screen recorder on my phone so I'm using my old phone to film this um, so I'm using the pocket pro I'm not familiar this is the first time using it uh, but it actually worked really good here so you can see at the beginning there it's at zero volts which would be that first red line and over here it's zero volts like that's our baseline so that's, you're measuring two, po two points on the positive cable with no load on it. So obviously it's gonna be zero. Where it dips here is where I was cranking it and then where it starts. So with the little black intersecting lines here, it tells me I have a dip of 1.4 volts. So as I had said, we're looking at 0.1 volt per connection ideally. So. 0.3 to 0.5 is what you want max so I'm triple that so that could definitely be part of my issue here and that's just on the positive connection again so I'm going to reverse this I'm going to check the negative terminal and I guess find a point on the block somewhere and see what the negative looks like okay so this negative test might be a somewhat flawed because you can't get anywhere close to the starter so you just go on a bolt on the block somewhere and then at the battery again. So according to this, it's a point 0.1, or sorry, one volt drop while cranking. 
So you can see pretty quick, so I'm losing 2.6, 2.4 volts between the positive and the negative cables and connections and stuff like that. So if your battery is at full charge at 12.6, you're only getting 10.2 volts to the starter. So that's why it starts fine in the summertime, but when it gets cold out, it's not getting full juice. Plus batteries, they don't work very good when it's cold. So you have that issue on top, yeah, so. The nice part about this is now we can narrow down to what connection is causing these high voltages. So we'll carry on and we're gonna check. Probably the next simplest spot will be at the this connection for the positive and probably the engine uh, ground cable, which is in this corner down here for the negative side. Okay, so I've got the memory of a goldfish, so I'm writing this down. So positive overall, we got 1.44. I tested this multiple times just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Um, yep, that's the positive and then that's my negative. So I want this down. Ideally you want it at zero, but that's not possible. So we're gonna try and get that lower. So we're gonna start narrowing it down to certain points so we can test. Um, so I wanna check at this jumper. It's the easiest spot next place to look and then kind of tells me whether I need to go this way to the starter or that way towards the battery. Okay, so I tested it both ways here from the jumper to the starter and from the jumper to the battery. Um, both ways are 0.5 volts. So I'm missing 0.4 somewhere here. Um, anyways, so I'm gonna take this out because I know I've got some bad connections here. Um, so we've got the starter side here that goes to the alternator. This one here goes to the power box here, I believe, and then the battery feeds in underneath. So we're gonna get the ground off the battery and then uh, get this jumper pack or connection point out of here. Okay, so from what I can feel, this stud goes through the positive cable that goes to the battery. It's, I assume, bonded to it somehow. But you can get the, the jumper out like the jumper there. So the plan is we're gonna get all this cleaned up. So hopefully we have the best connection we can have. We can kind of clean up down there a little bit and then uh, we'll get it together. And then we're gonna check in here yet too because there's a few kind of gray connectors. Okay, so we've got that nice and clean. You can coat it with fluid film or crown. Uh, battery protectant, this stuff is really little gummy so it works nice um, so now we're down to 0.8 volts across the positive uh, side so now we're gonna check underneath the seat so I've got this cover off which fits underneath here so we've got our battery it comes to a connection point there so this is all live so don't short anything out a um, bunch of heavy fuses this is a cable to the back battery I believe um, goes through this relay of some sort and then this will be I believe this will be the um, cable that goes to the engine bay because so, you kind of see it goes underneath it kind of fishes up and over so I believe it just goes out the firewall so I want to clean this connection, this connection, this connection, and I'm fairly certain that's plenty clean enough as well. So we're gonna just take the ground off and uh, clean all this stuff up and then we'll see what we're at for voltage drop. Okay, so we've got it all cleaned up here. So I just checked through the power box here. So we'd have one connection there, two, three, four, five connections all in a row there. We're at 78 millivolts, so that's 0 0.07 volts. So that's 0 0.1 0 per connection is what we're get, aiming for. So that's plenty good enough now. So I'm gonna check the whole system now and see how that is. All right, so we're still 0 0.8, so that's not good. Okay, so we're down to 0 0.8 volts. So I think 0 0.4 will be the cable coming to here and the remaining 0 0.4 will be the cable from there to the starter possibly the starter connection again because um, it's kind of down in that wheel well it gets coated with uh, road salt so 
that's kind of is what it is. I'm going to leave that there and work on the positive side now, or work on the negative side. Uh, there's not too many spots because there's just the block to the frame and then the frame to the battery. So, yeah, we'll clean those connections and see what we can get that down to. So with cleaned up connections, we're down to 0.8. So I check basically between the ground clamp on the frame to the block. And it was about 0.6 volts. So that's just strictly one connection there, which isn't a fun one to get to. Um, the phone's gonna block it now, but that's the block mount right there. So I'm gonna try and get that cleaned up yet. Okay, so our negative was 106. Um, cleaning up connections I could get to didn't make a difference. But what did make a difference was putting an extra ground strap on. So I think the ground connection on the block is probably dirty. Uh, but the issue is, um, so the bolt on the block way up in there, I cannot get out. I'm afraid I'm going to snap it. So I just made a second ground strap. I know it's the wrong color, but it's just the cable I had. And I just put it into the engine mount bolt there. So it's definitely better than what it was. Time for the moment of truth. So other app says it's minus 11 and it was minus 15 overnight. So it started up pretty good there. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna end off this video here. We got both numbers kind of half of what they used to be. Um, Ideally, for the positive side, I'm thinking I need to do the two cables, um, but I'm not going to at this time. I'm hoping it starts okay. So hopefully this video at least helps kind of narrow down where your uh, high resistances are, and if you have a starting issue, you can kind of get it figured out. So thanks for watching.